What is going on everyone? Thanks for checking out my video. Today we're in Napa Valley, California. We spent an entire day in this wine crazy town and in this video I'll be sharing with you our entire journey in full. We'll tour three wineries, check out the town of Napa, eat at some amazing restaurants, and stay in an old style inn built in the 1800s. Let's begin. So right now we are in the town of St. Helena, so we're gonna walk around. Looks like a beautiful little street with a bunch of shops and cool restaurants and this and that. So let's go take a look. At 10 a.m. it was time to experience our first Napa Valley winery. And what a sight we had driving up to this one. I've only ever seen photos of Napa Valley, so seeing this in person was simply amazing. Good morning everyone. We are starting off our Napa tour today at a beautiful castle winery, Castello de Amorosa, if I pronounce that correctly beautiful absolutely beautiful morning it's a little cooler than i would have thought but it's beautiful let's begin castello di amorosa opened to the public in april 2007 as the project of a fourth generation vintner dario satui who also owns and operates the v satui winery in 1993 satui purchased 171 acres for 3.1 million dollars then spent another $40 million to construct the castle, outbuildings, and the winery inside the castle. Here's a quote from Dario Satui himself. Welcome to Castel di Amorosa, the castle of love. Castello di Amorosa is a 30-year labor of love, a culmination of my life's dream to build an authentic Tuscan castle in the Napa Valley where I could make outstanding Italian-style wines. I built Castello di Amorosa because of my passionate, all-consuming desire to create something extraordinary, to honor my Italian heritage, of my deep love of medieval architecture, and because of my commitment to making superior wines in a magnificent setting. Now I take great pride in sharing the Castello with you. So you can do a self-guided tour, but we are doing the full experience, full guided tour. Looking forward to it. We started off our tour heading to the Great Hall. As you enter the Great Hall, please pay special attention to the front door. It's made with Italian oak and is adorned with a lattice of steel. With over 2,000 hand-forged nails, this door opens to the Great Hall. The administrative and social center of castles of your and usually the most magnificently appointed room. Next was the chapel. In medieval ages, the chapel was often one of the first structures built and was an essential part of any castle. Does the data back me up? Yes. Sorry, it has to this time. Uh, now you can look at this entire valley like a giant Doppler radar right here that's moving very slowly by the millions of years. Right? All of these little spots right here are the different ABAs, and those guys are slowly shifting as the soil erodes, as the different you know global warming things happen, all that stuff. But 
Why does that matter? All of these guys, there's 16 ABAs in this valley, where a valley usually will max out of four. On average, it will have one to two ABAs. 16 ABAs is a lot. This is like the Epcot Center of grapes, all within a 30 minute drive. You can go to German, Spanish, French, Italian, Austrian, etc. All these guys get to find their little homes in here. Now, how are we able to replicate every single Mediterranean climate in this entire valley? How's it? You're so full of it. How do you even know that? Because only 3% of the entire globe has a Mediterranean climate. It's a very small slice, and we occupy an even smaller slice of that, and within us, it's a little safe. Expensive bottle of wine. Darius' uh, father was a taxi driver, and Darius picked up the profits even though it was burned in that uh, <laughs> Next, we found ourselves in the armory. In the armory, you'll find suits of armor and weapons dating back hundreds of years. And you mustn't miss the Pit of Despair, a dungeon cell with an opening at the top. Next, we were off to the torture chamber. The torture chamber represents Dario Satui's vision for Castello di Amorosa. Every last detail must be authentic. Additionally, virtually all castles in Europe had prisons and torture chambers. Take the tour and you'll see an original Iron Maiden or the Virgin of Nuremberg. Uh, again, we have belt sticks, right? Um, this one is coming from an auction in Germany. Um, it's kind of a purchase in the early 2000s. It was the only real Iron Maiden in a permanent residency in California. Now, uh, if you don't know how they work, you stand on a little block, and your head is even with hers, then you force the two doors closed on you, then it permeates everything that's not vital. There's a lot of space for all of your uh, vitals to be just fine. This is a form of negligence torture, which is quite sadistic. It's basically just the box, but on steroids. Once you're in there, they just lock you in there and they leave you in there. Um, notice how the spikes are gauged, so as they permit you, they don't let any blood loss unless you start to struggle. And if you were to drop to your knees, you'd be eviscerated. So, uh, this is put up. All right, so he said everything in this room is fake except this. So this is from Germany and it is real. People actually died in here, which is just, uh, gosh. That's crazy. Look at that. Everything else is just uh, fake, but. This is the torture chamber. Our next stop was the Grand Barrel Room. The Grand Barrel Room is located three levels below ground. It's 12,000 square feet and has 14 foot tall ceilings and 40 cross vaults with ribbing. The brick is hundreds of years old they and imported from so Europe. Can you. Wow. John Bon Jovi and Kenny Loggins, they must have, they Very couldn't afford a barrel on Very they had low. The, they had the, Yeah, they yeah. had to actually. Love is love. Oh, 
<clears throat> we're falling back in the tour. That's fine. This is the entire basement we're going through. These are all individual bottles of wine. Wow. Wow. You guys want to grab it? I'm back up here. It was finally time for our much anticipated wine tasting. We had reds and white wines of all sorts. It's gonna be very, very oaky and buttery. The reason that it has our reserve title is because this is the Totally. Yeah, Brutu usually, in my opinion, a little acidic and a little overwhelming. Uh, this one is Look at there's ostriches. Holy crap. Wow, look at that. Look at these guys. They're like so close. Of course, do not feed, but what's up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> More goats, chickens. Wow. Talk about a view, huh? So this is Napa, California. Oh, you know what? I bet you these, these trees will look like they're still burned. Yeah, they are. So there was a huge fire here, the tour guide was telling us from uh, in 2020. And it came within 75 feet of the castle. So the castle's right there. But yeah, you can still see, look at the trees are like black. So all this was burned. But, and then that guy, that winery up there, they are still closed since the fires, but I believe he said they're trying to open in, within the next two years or so. Yeah, he said it takes five years to plant grapes from scratch, so yeah. they can't produce any wine until their grapes are ready enough. Yeah. And he said they had a lot of smoke damage, not really fire damage, but smoke. Yeah, so sad but this is just breathtaking and there's the castle well we are wrapping up our very first wine tasting wine tour of the day here at the castle now we're heading to the next one i'm not sure what it's called off the top of my head i have to see when we get there but let's move on to the next one It was time for our second wine tour of the day. The one we chose was at Long Meadow Ranch. They do have a few different options as far as wine tours go, but we decided on the Mountain Estate experience. And boy, was it an experience. As you can see, we met our tour guide at the bottom of the mountain and followed him all the way up to the ranch. I'm glad we had a truck for this. To be honest, we didn't realize this was a completely private tour. We felt spoiled having our own personal tour guide. They even had a table set up and all ready for us. We drank wine, chowed down on a charcuterie board, and had the most amazing view of the day looking over the Napa Valley. We then had our own private tour of the facility. We even got to taste test our own homemade olive oil. And yes, we did purchase two bottles of wine and a bottle of olive oil to take home. After our tour, it was time for lunch. So we decided to eat at the Long Meadow Ranch Farmstead Cafe. Well, 
last but not least, it was time for our third winery tour of the day at the one and only Robert Mondavi. So for the Robert Mondavi tour, we're only doing the wine tasting. We already did two other full-blown tours today here in Napa Valley. So we're just doing the wine tasting. It is at four o'clock, we're a little early. So anyway, we were told to kind of just hang out in this beautiful area till four o'clock and then we'll go check back in. So they actually told us, uh, you know, till we have our reservation at four o'clock, they said we can spend some time walking around so that's what we're going to do. My wife and I are huge fans of Robert Mondavi wines, so for us personally, this was a must-see. However, as an FYI, in order to take this wine tour, you had to book the whole package with a lunch or dinner. It was a little pricey, and we wanted to save room for our dinner out, so that's why we decided on just the wine tasting. All right, really quick. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell by this, but there's definitely wolves or coyotes, whatever the hell is in California. Like, oh my God, they're all the wolves or coyotes howling. Like there's a pack of, oh my gosh, I never heard that before. So there's like a pack of them. Oh my word, I thought it was kids at first, but it's all out in the woods straight that way. This view. It was pretty cool to walk around and see the fields, especially during sunset. But now it was time for our final wine tasting. We enjoyed a wide variety of both red and white wines. After a very long wine drinking day, we made it to our hotel. Or should I say the Blackbird Inn? I'll just say this, I'd recommend this place to anyone. All right, so we just came in. We're in room number six. I guess we'll do a view of the closet afterwards, but this is the cutest little room. Very much reminds us, if you ever watched the Gilmore Girls, it reminds us of the uh, the show, the Gilmore Girls. The Dragonfly Inn that Warlie Gilmore owns. So, very nice, it's a small room. I just found out this house was built in the 1800s. So, pretty old, but cool. We have a queen size bed, which we're currently not used to. We've had a king for about two years now, so anything smaller than a king seems small to us. But, nonetheless, it looks comfy. The Napa Valley Distillery has small batch hand sanitizer in a glass bottle. That's cool. That is really cool. Made in Napa. Wow. Made in Napa. Time for dinner. Since this was my birthday trip, I decided on Cole's Chop House, 
it was really cool to be able to walk from our inn right into downtown Napa. Good morning, everyone. Let's go check out downtown Napa in the daylight and also grab a cup of coffee. And just like that, our time in Napa was over. But we were very excited to head to San Francisco, where we would spend two full days. If you'd like to check out our drive over the Golden Gate Bridge, that's what the remainder of this video is. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching my video. And I'll see you all next time on the Travel Channel. Take care.